All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to work on a piece of my YouTube filming equipment that has died on me. This is a Zhiyun Smooth X gimbal. And the problem that it's got is that the battery isn't holding a charge. And, you know, this is not anything that's meant to be repairable. They would want you to toss it and get a new one, but we're not going to do that. We're going to figure out what kind of batteries in here and replace it. So I'm guessing, you know, because this is just a handle and there's no electronics here, it's got to be in this area. So we're going to peel back this rubber very carefully and see if we see any sign of a fastener and we do perfect so there's one I don't know how many there are but if it's on that side then maybe the other one's gonna be in this side as well so we'll just use this metal spudger we'll go down here and see if we see any others, this will preserve the adhesive, so hopefully we can get it to stick back on. There's another one right there. So I'm guessing maybe four. And approximately the same place on each side. Let's see. Now there's one in the center right there. And there's the opposing side. I don't expect there to be any on this side because we didn't see any running the perimeter on the other side, but maybe one back here. Yep, right there. All right, with those five fasteners off, we should be able to separate this, and we can. Perfect. So there is the electronics board. There's got to be a battery in here somewhere. Let's take off the fasteners that are securing this little small electronics board. One here. One here. One here. And anything over there? Yep. These wires out of the way so we don't nick them and create a short. All right, four fasteners. And let's see if there's a battery on the other side. There is. Perfect. So what we're going to have to do now is we're just going to get these connectors freed up, flip this over, and we'll see what kind of battery we need to go look for. All right, so let's just try to get this adhesive that's been applied on the sides of this connector. We'll hope it's not a carcinogen. That lets us unplug this. And we should be able to do the same thing to the other side now and get enough slack to flip it over. Careful you don't slip, right? Because there's a surface mount component right there that you could easily dislodge from the board. And there's also components here. So I guess we'll try to move towards the handle side in case we slip. There we go. All right. So this battery is just soldered on. I'm guessing he's got a small kind of adhesive yep there's a little adhesive strip you can see it right there hopefully you can see it I don't know if you can see it Get a little bit of light down there's an adhesive strip so we're gonna have to carefully separate this to get this to release from the board all right this battery is badly bloated so this is definitely our problem I'm using a plastic spudger you noticed I had a metal one earlier but 
We don't want to accidentally pierce this battery. That would be bad. That could cause a fire or worse. So we use the plastic tool and we're just working to slowly get the adhesive strip to deform and let go of the battery. You just want to go slow because there's a circuit board here on the other side and any overt flex on the board could cause something to lift off. Try not to hit the power button like I almost did as well. That's not a good thing either. Just got maybe a half inch or so more to go. It's some good adhesive, I'll say that. All right. So no writing anywhere on the battery. So we're going to have to try and estimate it's, well, we can get its voltage just from charging it and measuring it. We're going to have to estimate its milliamp hours based on its size. So I'll see if I can find something suitable and share it with you guys. All right, so this type of battery is soldered on to the circuit board. So we're going to need to desolder it first. So let's take care of that. We're going to put a little bit of flux on here, and then we're going to put it underneath a magnifying glass. Hopefully it'll allow you guys to see as well as myself. It's going to get a little loud in a minute with the exhaust fan. But we're just going to pop this guy off. Pretty straightforward job. We'll do the positive first. Trying to get it where we don't touch this little plastic connector over here. And then what we're going to do is take this guy off so he doesn't accidentally touch anything. And then we'll go grab the negative terminal and the thermistor terminal. You notice this is a three terminal battery. And then we replace it. We're going to use leaded solder to get rid of this lead free crap. It's so hard to get off. Come on. Very difficult to work with. All right, and then we'll get the thermistor. And then we're done. So this battery, for as far as finding a replacement for it, you can see, so we just described it, has three leads that we're going to need to replace, positive, negative, and a thermistor circuit, which is something that's used to tell the temperature of the battery while it's being charged as part of the circuitry on this board. We're going to need to find a battery that's a lithium, lithium polymer type, a LiPo, that's around 22 millimeters wide and approximately seven millimeters thick and then roughly in the neighborhood of 65 millimeters long. Now we pulled the 
tape off the other side, and we find that there is some numbering on here. It tells us everything we need to know. So it's 3.7 volts, 1,000 milliamp hours, and then there's a number on here. But this particular number, when you try to go find replacements with this number, what you find is a lot of Chinese copies that are just two-wire batteries. And so what I eventually settled on for the replacement was this guy here. So this guy here is a 901860, same voltage, same milliamp hours. We can see as far as the measurements we took, the uh, height is a little bit more than we would like, sitting around 9. And then lengthwise, it's slightly shorter, sitting around 58 or 59. Actually, I got it. maybe don't have it right on the edge there. Yeah, 59 or so. You can call it 60. And then the, the width, though, I think is spot on. Maybe a slightly different there to 18 millimeters wide. So this will work for us. It's going to meet the electrical requirements. It's going to be a little bit on the thicker side, but this is all I could find in a three-wire setup. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this soldered in and attached here, and we're going to see if this is acceptable to the circuit on this board. I know I said I was going to pull this lead-free solder off of here, guys, but I forgot. So we're just going to run with it as is. All right, we got everything ready to go there. We'll let that dry up. No damage to any plastic connectors. We'll take a little ISP here and clean up this flux residue. And then we'll put this back together and we'll see how she is. All right, guys, I went ahead and mounted the board back in here just to make sure that the power button is reasonably where we want it to be. We're going to go ahead and reconnect these end terminals. This end and this end. And then we're going to see if it's happy with this battery. All right, so it's happy with the battery. No smoke or anything like that. I don't know that we'll actually get any movement out of it without any weight on it, though. The problem is really, though, the slight thickness in the battery. The replacement battery, like we, we measured, it, is a couple of millimeters thicker than the other one. So I definitely am not going to tighten these screws down all the way because that could cause this board to bow. But I think electrically we're okay with this. So we're going to go ahead and re-secure this connector with the same kind of silicone adhesive that was used originally. This is electronics grade silicone. You can't use the stuff you might get at the uh, hardware store, like at Home Depot or something, because most of those silicones are going to give off acetic acid during the curing process which will corrode a circuit board. So you have to use electronic grade silicone for this. If you don't have that, then you could use a heat gun and that would work just fine as well. All right, so what I'm really after is, are we gonna be able to get this back cover to fit? I think we will. It's gonna be a tight fit, but I think we're gonna be able to get that back on and be able to effect a repair here. You know, the alternative is you'd have to toss this thing. All right, so let's go ahead, let that dry, and then we'll get our back cover on. All right, guys, I'm just going to fire this thing back up here again. Just wanted to show you that it is working okay here. Here's the head unit. I thought it needed more weight to function, but it looks like it's operating okay. The problem is this battery is perfectly fine with that 2 millimeters. It's really creating a problem here. We cannot get 
safely. We can't tighten this down because it's going to put too much pressure on the uh, circuit board, unfortunately. So while it's an electrically okay repair, it's a mechanically a problem. It's a shame, though, too, because this particular battery um, is not reproduced. I, I searched everywhere. You know, you can't find it on eBay or AliExpress or, or, or Amazon or anything like that. And every one of the batteries that comes up with this number is only a two-pin style. Now, I thought about maybe trying to take the thermistor circuit off of this battery and try to manually kind of attach it on there, but I think that would be uh, too risky. These LiPo batteries are a real fire hazard. You don't want to help them along in that regard. So this is going to be functional, and I think I'll just run with this for a while and keep searching for something that might be closer to the thickness of this guy because what's going to happen here is if this ever goes and they swell up when they go normally, that's going to really put some more stress on this circuit board. But I'll go ahead and post this video because at least it shows you how you would go about doing the repair. The challenge is finding a battery that's thin enough to fit in this very tiny area here. And the one I've suggested is good enough for a pinch, but definitely not something you want to try long term. But if it, uh, if it works for you, then great. If you got comments or you have a source for a different kind of battery that might be thinner, uh, go ahead and leave that below. I think everybody would appreciate it. If you found this video useful and it taught you at least how to get inside this SmoothX gimbal, go ahead and leave a comment about that as well. And as always, thanks for watching.